Hey YouTube Franks, welcome back to another video. I decided to make this one on a whim to answer a very frequently asked question beyond my everything about a certain character video. Question is, Mr. Strimmer, say I can guarantee either Tartak, which is on the current banner, or Hu Tang, which is coming on the next banner, which would you recommend gameplay wise? Now, besides the default response of, quote, pick the character you like more, unquote, which is definitely what you should prioritize, it says nothing about gameplay differences and your roster. So that's the context behind this video. Let's begin. Okay, so for compositions regarding both Tartag and Hu Tao, probably the most important factor to building a character. Both Hu Tao and Tartag are DPS carries. That means the other slots are open for sub-DPS, Anemo supports, and or healers. Now if you haven't heard already, Genshin Impact is also known as Support Impact. A DPS unit is only a fraction of a team's power. The synergy from reactions, buffing, and crowd control from the supports on the team are what really turn a composition into a powerhouse. Now Hu Tao and Tartag are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Tartag over here is primarily an AoE Hydro DPS with lower output on single target DPS, taking advantage of AoE Riptide status activated on every part of his kit. Hu Tao, on the other hand, is primarily a single target Pyro DPS with access to internal cooldown ignoring charge attacks and slight AoE from a burst. So let's begin with composition factors for Tartak first. So one of the strongest ones is investment into Xiangling Constellation 4, one of Tartak's strongest team members taking advantage of constant vaporized procs from Xiangling's Pyronado. Constellation 4 provides that 40% extended duration, bringing her burst duration to 14 seconds, massively increasing damage output per rotation. This rotation also fits with Tartak on hard of depth set and paired with Xiangling, adding in Bennett for that juicy pyre resonance, buffing, and the main healer for the comp. So this is the vaporized Tartak comp over here would typically be like an Anemo support that groups enemies around and is one of his strongest. Now alternatively, investment into Beido C2 plus an additional electro character. So this is his taser composition and maximizes effectiveness against groups of enemies. Takes advantage of Beido's Constellation 2 bounce combined with Tartak's Riptide to shred enemies with constant AoE damage and additional electro charge procs. Add in for example, double electro Electro to solve energy generation issues if present for Beto's burst. So those two compositions, the vaporized one and the taser one, are generally solid foundations to consider investing in Tartag for team building. Another one is also freeze, but when we're talking about pulling for Tartag, it's not strong enough to consider compared to these two comps. Okay, so for Hu Tang, there's one major deciding factor, Xing Xiao. Especially at C6 for Xing Xiao, uh, this guarantees that Hu Tao's charge attacks always reverse vaporize, which enables a very high DPS ceiling per Hu Tao's elemental skill conversion rotation. Now, the problem is that Qing Chou is extremely overworked. So depending on your existing pyro DPS investment, this one may suffocate your resources, so consider that. So in my opinion, these are the most important factors to consider for composition building. If you already have these certain investments, it'll be a lot easier to weave in Tartak or Hu Tao into your roster and not feel scarce on resources. Okay, so on to weapons and artifacts. This is also super important for their personal damage output and resin usage. Some super strong choices are locked behind battle pass or gacha pulling, so depending on what you have, it makes investment into these characters easier. So this section is less important than team compositions, since at the bare minimum, they can still work with 3-star options and generic 2-piece 2-piece DPS artifacts with good substats. So first, for Tartak, what I would consider highly valuable weapons for Tartak, and you'll notice similarities to Tartak guide video. Viridescent Hunt. Heavy synergy with Riptide, easy crit rate stat stick to build around, buffs all part of his damage from Riptide, Burst, normal charge attack damage. Unfortunately, locked behind the battle pass $5. Rust at R3+. Plus. So this is a normal attack steroid, mainly focused on a really autopilot left-click playstyle. It requires well-invested artifacts as it does, since it doesn't provide any crit rate or crit damage, and a slight sacrifice to Riptide and Burst damage, but still a really strong choice for that normal attack steroid. And any of the 5-star bows from Thundering Pulse to Polar Star, Almost Bow, Skyward Harp, they all work, except for the Elegy because LRG is a support-based weapon. Any of these four all massively increase his DPS output one way or another and make him a monster carry. Thundering Pulse, Polar Star, and Skyward Harp are all relatively easier to build around because they provide some sort of crit rate and crit damage. Almost Bone is still super strong, but doesn't provide the crit rate crit damage, so you're going to need stronger artifacts for this weapon. And if you'd like to see other options to consider that I didn't mention here, you can check out my complete Tartag guide at the weapon testing timestamps. It includes Raven Bow and Slingshot 3-star weapons to compare. Okay, let's move over to Hu Tao. So in my opinion, highly valuable weapons for Hu Tao that make it much easier to build around her. Deathmatch at R1+. Super easy crit rate stat stick, 33.5% at level 80 to build around. 
Its passive is also universal. It's always active. No matter how many enemies are nearby, the, the passive is always active. So you get a little bit of an attack buff here as well. The attack buff is less meaningful for her, but it still is a slight increase in damage. And then Dragon's Bane at R1+. Plus. So at R1, this is only 20%, but still meaningful. For this, definitely use with the Xing Chou comp. Strongest four-star choice for the strongest Hu Tao composition. Running this at R5 with the Xing Chou C6 can compete with some five-star weapons DPS output. It's a steroid to Hydra or Pyro afflicted enemies and it also grants you elemental mastery on the secondary stat for increased vaporized damage only problem no crit rate crit damage on the weapon so you'll need it all from the artifacts and then uh, five star options jade spear and homa I would typically stray away from Skyward Spine or Engulfing Lightning. These two weapons are not worth it for you to consider guaranteeing Hu Tao, right? They can be used. They're not going to showcase her in the strongest light. So obviously, Staff of Homa is her signature weapon. It's perfect for her. If you have this weapon, you probably already have Hu Tao, and you might be watching this video just because you want to support me, and I really appreciate that. For Primordial Jade Winged Spear, Dragon's Bane R5 can compete with this weapon. So Dragon's Bane is a really solid choice, especially at R5. So... We just talked about Hu Tao weapons and Tartag weapons. So if you have these weapons that I mentioned already invested in or with high refinement or plan on investing, along with my composition recommendations, that should be sufficient to make a decision. So before we move on to artifacts, weapons and units can't be farmed like artifacts can. So it's a lot more difficult to build around if you don't have some of the previously mentioned. Okay, so final section for artifacts. This is more on resin usage and how much you're willing to sacrifice if you didn't prepare. For Shimanawa's set, both Tartag and Hu Tao can use this four-piece set. Not optimally, but usable and efficient if you have some byproducts farming for Emblem set, which is optimal for a lot of characters. So since they can both use that set, there's no difference resin uses for either character. So let's go into their specific sets. Tartag on Heart of Death four-piece. If you already have characters like Ayaka or Ganyu and have Blizzard sets for them, there's a chance that you have some Heart of Death lying around. This also works composition-wise since they use different supports to build around. Easy choice, low resin waste. For Hu Tao, Crimson Witch 4-piece. Definitely more annoying of the two to farm in my opinion between Heart of Death and Crimson Witch. However, a lot of people switching over to Hu Tao generally had a Pyro DPS originally that they intend to bench for her. If you think you might do that, then likely you won't have to refarm. Just try to get that HP% timepiece because that's the only difference between a typical Pyro DPS. I mean, we meme about HP and defense so much, so this shouldn't be a problem, right? At the end of the day though, it's main stat and sub stats that matter first, before set bonus. A character still performs perfectly fine with perfect artifacts and zero set bonus. Your artifacts forming a cohesive whole with the set bonus will come with time. All right, so that should wrap it up. Simple, but hopefully effective, clearing doubts between these two characters. Made this video on a whim. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next video. Take care.